We are joined now by Jesse Waters, Fox News host uh, and author, his latest book, Get It Together, Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe. Uh, Jesse, I, I hope that you'll do some video of you handing this out to uh, shrieking purple-haired banshees <laughs> who are definitely going to be uh, mobbing you at book signings and saying things that we probably couldn't play over the radio alongside your many, many fans across the country. But thanks for being here with us. Buck, thanks so much. And I won't be doing it. I'll have Johnny hand the book out to the freaks. <laughs> there you go. That's one way to go. So, uh, you know, let's let's start with this. When you hear, I mean, you live in New York now. I know you're originally, and yeah, Clay's got his copy. He's holding it up so everyone can see it on the stream. Um, you hear about what they're trying to do to Trump. And now they're, tr I mean, there's a lot that that could be. But the seizing of the buildings, one, do you think they actually go through with it? Two, do you think it actually benefits Trump or hurts him politically? I think it helps him. And I believe Frank Luntz was on the air the other day saying, absolutely, he's a pollster absolutely helps him. I mean, if you're going to indict the guy on 91 counts and then start padlocking Trump Tower, are you kidding me? They're making this guy a victim. They've figured out a way to make Donald Trump a martyr. And if they start putting up yellow tape around 40 wall, there's going to be sympathy throughout the country, and they're going to see how rigged and how dangerous and how Soviet it all looks. And I don't know. I think everybody right, left, center feels like what's happening right now has gotten to be way overboard and it's bordering on absolute communism. And I don't even live here anymore. I moved to New Jersey. So I, I got the hell out. Jesse, what would have to happen for your mom to vote for Trump? Um, she'd have to be dead. I'd have to vote <laughs> for her from the grave, which the Democrats do. Kidding. Yeah, but you, you, she would never. My mom thinks she's he's a threat to democracy. Literally thinks the bloodbath thing was not have anything to do with the auto industry. Thinks literal bloodbath. So the reason why I bring that up is I'm always in my head thinking I'm making arguments to people that are persuadable voters. That is people who are out there and they might be willing to consider good arguments. How many people in America today do you think, percentage-wise, are actually open to being persuaded as opposed to basically being so fixed in a camp that it doesn't matter what happens, their worldview doesn't change? You probably have about 40%, even on both sides, but you have about 40% locked in. Nothing you could say. And then there's the middle, and those people are a little more open-minded. I'm open-minded. I can change positions. I mean, I used to think Clay was a good dresser. Now I don't. So I I'm, I'm so definitely, when, drink I see, out there. when I see facts come in, I analyze the facts. But if you talk to a lot of people, and I did this in the book, Get It Together, we speak to people who there's no way you're going to change their mind because it's an emotional problem. They have a personality disorder. These people want to empty the prisons, open the borders, legalize drugs, legalize prostitution, and they're going to topple a statue of Thomas Jefferson. So you've reached a point where you're not talking to rational people. You're talking to people with issues, and they're trying to make their issues our issues. And they're trying to remake society instead of remaking themselves. And that's why we have a real problem in this country, because no one says get it together. We stop saying no to people, parents, the courts. You've seen it. Look what happens when we stop saying no. People run buck wild, and hey. this is where we are. That's right. So uh, it's. I know your show is doing well, uh, maybe despite you, um, because <laughs> the people, um, I, when I'm out and about, people come up to me somewhat regularly. This is actually the most common thing I get about Fox News hits and say, hey, I think your jackets look good. Tell Jesse that he's attacking your clothes way too much. I mean, this is legitimately happening. But I'm curious for you, Jesse, you've been doing Fox News for a while. Are you surprised that the media hasn't come after you as a new guy on Fox News harder than they have? Because it doesn't feel like they've really been able to get a glove on you. And I, I just kind of anticipate that 
when you're the new guy in a seat, they come after you. Has it surprised you that they really haven't been able to kind of land blows on you? Well, I've been at this company since I was 22 years old. Well, that's so true. they've seen me causing trouble on the streets for the O'Reilly factor. They've seen me on the weekends at eight. They've seen me on the five during the weekdays. They saw me at seven for about a year and a half before I moved to eight o'clock. So they know how lovable and charming I am. And, you know, they, they see my personality on the five, which, you know, I don't take myself that seriously. I can be self-deprecating. And, you know, I'm trying to put on a good TV show. So, you know, I'm sure they'll come after me and they'll be cheap shots. But uh, I try not to read. When I got the show, Tucker told me not to read any of the press about myself. And, uh, you know, for Tucker, that was probably a good idea. He probably shouldn't read what they write about him. But I don't read about what they write about me. So even if they were coming after me, I probably wouldn't know. Speaking of Jesse Waters, you all know him from his show, 8 o'clock Eastern Fox News. And Jesse, uh, get it together. Troubling Tales from the Liberal Fringe, the book that is out now. H- how are you feeling about things going into the the thick of the election season here pretty soon? I mean, uh, we're seeing all these numbers. I, You know, Clay tends to be more optimistic about the country not completely collapsing. I, I get a little bit more freaked out sometimes about the communists overrunning us. But when you see numbers like Trump up eight in Michigan, h- how do you process that? Like, what what's your thinking? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Clay. I'm optimistic because I have Johnny who goes to the streets and asks real people real questions. And the black community's had it with Biden. So is the Hispanic community. And we, he has a hard time finding Biden supporters. And we do the show for Manhattan. And that's no joke. So when I was doing this for The Factor, I would go out and talk to African-Americans, and Barack Obama could do anything, and they would defend him. Joe Biden has no support in that community now. So I look at that anecdotally, and I think this guy doesn't even have a shot. And then I look at the polls, and the polls back that up. Trump's ahead in every single battleground. And when you have a Republican also up nationally, with California, New York, I mean, nationally, Republicans are never ahead in the general election. I mean, Trump could lose nationally by two and a half, three percentage points, like he did to Hillary, and still win the Electoral College. So if Trump's up to 1.8, the way he is now nationally, that's a landslide. That is a Republican landslide. And then I think back to the red wave. And then I think about abortion. And then I think about the deep state and what they're trying to do with the CIA. Now, the CIA, a whistleblower, came out and said that they're witness tampering with the Hunter Biden case. And then I see them teeing up all the bloodbath language, the dictator on day one hoax, and it looks like it's another justification to insert the FBI and the CIA into domestic politics to kneecap the president, former president, one more time. And so it's going to be close, but just Trump has to – it has to be a big enough win so they can't screw around. And, and, and at that point, it looks like we're good, but you never know. Jesse, See, he sounded like you... me at the end there. I just want yeah. to be clear, Clay. He sounded yeah. like me at the end. He sounded like you at the beginning, but then he started to sound like Buck. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when you look at the VP options out there, yeah. we've been talking VP. I'm sure you get asked the VP question all the time. Buck was just speaking down in Texas. People wanted to know, who would you say is the VP that could make a difference for Trump? Or do you kind of buy in that it doesn't matter? It's going to come down to Trump v. Biden no matter what. I think it doesn't matter, and it usually doesn't. The only way it matters a little bit more this time is because Trump's only got one term to go. I mean, he's not going to be a dictator. So in four years, if he wins, he is going to basically have teed up his VP beautifully. And, you know, after the first two years of a Trump second term, whoever the VP is is going to start running for president. They're probably going to start running for president immediately, which is going to annoy Trump. And then Trump's probably going to try to sabotage them. You know how he is. He likes all the attention, which is fun. And that'll be dramatic and we'll love covering it, the personal drama. But, you know, sometimes you think women, and I like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and and then you think, all right, well, forget about gender. Let's just go with the guy he gets along with. And you hear about Tim Scott. I don't like Tim Scott. I don't think he's that great. And they might want someone that just doesn't make a lot of waves, no drama. 
And then you want to see maybe someone that adds to the equation. Uh, uh, Elizabeth guy, J.D. Vance, they like his ideology, but then he'd be leaving a safe Senate seat in Ohio. And then you think DeSantis, because they ever put that back together. I don't think they could. I mean, that would be, I think that would be an easy win if Trump picked DeSantis. That would really unite the party. But I don't think Trump is going to do that because, you know, he doesn't forgive. But I don't know. Who do you guys like? I, I haven't really heard a name that really, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been, Clay's been saying Tim Scott. I've been saying J.D., but I, every time I say that, I'm like, but I don't know. So but I'm hearing <laughs> Rubio just, now. Now I'm hearing yeah, Rubio. That one is that's what real. we talked about a little bit earlier on the show. That's out of nowhere. I mean, you would have never have thought. Remember when he was, what is he like? Little, he was calling like uh, Little Marco. Little, yeah, little Marco. Marco. I mean, and, and now here we are. Maybe, maybe Little Marco will be VP Marco. We'll see. The book is Get It Together, Troubling Tales from a Liberal Fringe, out by our friend Jesse Waters. And of course, check him out on Fox at 8 Eastern. Jesse, great to have you on, man. Thank you. Clay Buck, thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, so this coming week, I've got family members coming down for Easter, Clay. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to do an alligator boat tour. Oh, that's fun. awesome. I've yeah, done that. We're get on the airboat? Airboats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, go go fast on those boats. Look for some gators. I, I think gators are amazing as long as you're not. I'm obsessed you know, with them. Women next to them. But they're pretty cool. There's going to be photos and videos and all kinds of good stuff going on. But, you know, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have had your smartphone to take that video and photo. You had to have an old VHS recorder, which we had in the Sexton household. My dad used it all the time. He was taking video of us. But you know what? We can still enjoy that stuff today because we sent it in to Legacy Box. That's right. Old photos, old VHS tapes, that media that you've stored so many family memories on, you know, generations worth of family memories. It's fading. It's not something you can enjoy anymore, and eventually it's going to be turned into something that you can't use under any circumstances unless you do something about it. Legacy box, my friends. That's what you need. They send you a box. Makes sense, right? Legacy box. You fill it with your old media, and then they transfer it digitally for you. You can get it on a thumb drive in the cloud. That way you can have it on your computer, on your phone, the videos, the photos, the stuff of your greatest memories as a family and from your life. Legacy Box does this for you. It's so easy. Right now, their pricing is just $9 per tape. That's some 65% off. Legacy Box digitally transfers everything by hand right here in the U.S. in Tennessee. Legacy Box, $9 per tape video sale going on right now. Normally, it's about $30 per tape. So you're talking about a 65% discount. And more than a million and a half families like mine and Clay's family have already trusted Legacy Box. Go online to LegacyBox.com slash Buck for this $9 per tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash B-U-C-K.